Hi folks, Bill Steele here with 3D Chameleon and in this video we're going to walk through the unboxing and installation of the 3D Chameleon onto this uh, Ender 3 clone. Uh, this is the Elegoo Neptune, uh, but it's uh, pretty much functionally identical to the Ender 3, uh, in this case the Ender 3 V2. Uh, but we'll talk about those installation differences, if there are any, and uh, how you can deal with them. So let's start off with a uh, a uh, quick little unboxing of what's uh, what's actually in the 3D Chameleon. Um, first thing that we're going to do is open her up here and we'll start off with the power supply. Uh, you're going to get a, a 9 volt or a 12 volt power supply in your box. Uh, we've also got some bubble packs here. You can just safely discard those. Um, and then we have a bag of zip ties and connectors and various other screws and bits inside of there. And then the most important part is the 3D Chameleon itself. Now this happens to be all wrapped up. I'm going to show you one that I have unwrapped right next here. And then finally in the box we have some uh, documentation where to go for instructions to assemble it as well as my contact information. So please feel free to call uh, uh, contact me here via email uh, if you need that. And also don't forget to go to our website 3dchameleon.com where you can check out our FAQs as well as our forums. Uh, the other thing that you're going to find on there is the G-code generator. So you do not need to develop your own G-code. You can just uh, uh, watch the uh, G-code generator video we have and you'll see how you can actually just enter the two parameters that you have for installing it. Um, and I will show you how to collect that information here at the end of this video. So the next thing that you're going to need is a series of tools uh, that uh, are with your, uh, to install this. Um, so I like to start off with a pair of side cutters here. We're going to use those to, to handle our zip ties and things like that. Um, you're going to need a small Phillips screwdriver. Uh, the rest of these tools are actually tools that came with your printer. Uh, we have the, uh, the wrench, uh, wrench set that came with it, and we have the Allen keys that came with it. In particular, we have a uh, 1.5, we have a 2 millimeter, a 2.5, and a 3 millimeter uh, uh, Allen key set. We're going to use each one of those. Um, some machines might not use all of them. Some might just use the 2.5. It's totally going to be dependent on your particular machine. Um, and then the last thing that I have here is a small ruler. Uh, this happens to be a 150 millimeter long ruler, and we're going to use that to measure our filament. You can use any device to, to get a pretty close, accurate measurement. The other thing that we have here is uh, in the kit, um, I mentioned this earlier in the bag, we actually have a bunch of items in here that we're going to be using. Um, we're going to be using the zip ties. So there's, there's some larger zip ties. And we also have a whole bunch of small zip ties. Uh, we're going to use those later on for cable management. Uh, in fact, I won't even cover the cable management in here because that's going to be unique to your particular printer um, and where you want to run your cabling and things like that. Uh, but so um, just be aware that those are those are in the kit. Uh, some of the important things that are in the kit, one more tool, is the razor blade. Whenever you're cutting any of the PTFE tubes, never ever cut them with side cutters. Always use the included razor blade or a uh, straight cutter um, like the uh, Capricorn tube. If you decide to switch to Capricorn tube, uh, for example, they come with a, a little crimp cutter that uses a blade inside it very similar to this. You always want to use something like this to, and cut straight down. You want a perfectly straight cut. You never want a crushing cut, but the side cutters will do. Uh, you'll find a couple pieces of plastic in yours. Uh, the most important one is this piece right here. If you're going to mount it to the top of a printer, uh, this is actually a mount that attaches right to the top of the printer, just like that. And uh, this will mount to the uh, the uh, 3D Chameleon itself, and I'll show you how to do that as part of the kit. Um, some of your kits, depending on how old it is, they'll come with this little beauty cover. This is a cover that covers the switch that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, the other thing that's going to be important inside of this bag is going to be these four 35 millimeter screws. So you should see these uh, in your kit. 
Um, these are going to be used to attach this to the 3D Chameleon. Um, we're going to use one of these PTFE couplers. So this is the black one. It has a, a very large opening on the bottom. This will allow the PTFE tube to pass through it. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about why we have this here in a second. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to use the one of the black M4 screws. We have the black M4 screw and we're going to use one of the T-nuts. Be sure you get one of them with a four millimeter. We're gonna use the smaller T-nut with the four millimeter hole in it. There are several others in here, but for this particular install, we need that. Um, I say several others. For example, there are some much larger T-nuts in here. So for example, this one, you can see it's significantly larger than the other one. Um, this is for this 80, or this 20 millimeter extrusion that goes in, in the slot. This won't fit in there. Uh, this is designed for 30 millimeter extrusion. So for example, if you're installing this on a Prusa i3 or a Prusa Mini, uh, you're gonna use these larger ones. There are various other uh, tidbits inside of the bag here. There's extra PTFE connectors. Uh, there are some crimp tools. So if you decide to replace your PTFE tube, for example, we have some uh, spare parts in there for that as well. So let me go ahead and put that out of the way and let's talk about the 3D Chameleon itself. So we've unwrapped the 3D Chameleon here and you'll see that we actually wind up with a pretty long chain here. Starting with the green end, we have a small four inch length of PTFE tube or 100 millimeters. We have the Y adapter. We have a, a meter of tube connecting back to the 3D Chameleon. And then coming off the 3D Chameleon, we have two wires that are on some uh, older machines, there might be two separate wires. On some of the newer, it's a single uh, ribbon cable. And then that takes us back to the electronics. And the electronics are in their own printed housing. There we go. And the printed housing should have two uh, couplers on it for attaching again to your frame. And then lastly, we have the actual switch. Uh, and this is the switch that triggers the unit. So the first thing that I want to do when I get this out of the bag is I simply want to test this. Let's just make sure that we're, we're good to go and we're, you know, we can print this. So let me grab a power cord here. So I happen to have one of these power cords already out. I, I keep them tied together here just so for handy usage. Let me just go ahead and plug this in. And when you plug this in, you should see a green light come on inside the box here. And uh, with that green light on, I have the switch. If I've just pressed the switch, I'll see the little red light come on there. If I press the switch for one second, we should see or and hear the 3D Chameleon reset to color one. And there we go, it reset. So as I press this, every time I press this, you see this, uh, what we call the selector rotating by 90 degrees and when it when it gets over to the nine o'clock position it'll reset itself back to six the idea here is that this is extruder one extruder two extruder three and extruder four or if you're looking at the g-code it's going to be t0 t1 t2 t3 so they use t0 for extruder one now what does that mean on the extruders themselves well that's very simple we start at one on the top here Two is uh, underneath of it at, by the motor here. Three is down here, and four is over here. So we can see that it cycles through each one of those colors. So how do we test this? Well, as we're cycling through, we can see that it's, it's, it's correctly cycling through them, no problem. I'm gonna grab a little piece of filament here, and I'm going to reset it. Make sure we're reset to one. Resetting to one is always a one second pulse, one 1,000 and you hear the machine uh, kind of vibrating once it hits the home. Uh, hits the home. Again, if, we, if we're not there, a quarter second pulse, you'll see it advance one quarter. If no matter where I'm at, if I press it for one second, it'll always take it back to extruder one or T0 in the G-code. So now that I'm at T0, let's go ahead and take a piece of filament, and I'm just gonna stick it inside here. I'm not gonna do anything other than just sticking it inside there. Um, I'm not pushing it, I'm not forcing it, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the, the buttons here to command it to load that filament, okay? 
Now, the way we do this on the 3D Chameleon is the we have two additional button presses, one for three and a half seconds and one for five and a half seconds. The three and a half seconds turns the motor counterclockwise. The one for five and a half seconds turns the motor clockwise. Now, depend, that's um, going to load a counterclockwise position. It's going to load three and four, but unload one and two. The reverse of that is true. A clockwise motion is going to load one and two, but unload three and four because they're both on they're on either side of the motor shaft. So once basically if you're looking down at this, the motor, you're going to turn it clockwise to load one and two. So to turn it clockwise, that's a five and a half second pulse. So I'm going to take the filament, I'm going to stick it in there, and I'm going to press this for five and a half seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six. So I just stopped it before six, right? And now the second press, as long as I'm pressing it, this filament will load. It will continue to turn that motor in the clockwise direction until I stop pressing the button. And there we can see it's loading the filament. As long as I'm holding the button, it's going to load the filament. Now, generally what you're going to do when you're running the printer is we're going to back it out of the stock extruder here and we're going to unload it for 10 seconds, roughly one second per inch or 25 millimeters. So what that's going to do is we're for 10 seconds, we'll unload the filament. That'll move it 10 inches, which will bring it back here just before the Y adapter. And then when we load it, we're going to load for 10 seconds. We're going to go the opposite way for 10 seconds. Um, it'll load that uh, 25, uh, 250 millimeters or, or 10 inches. So now that I have that loaded somewhat here, I'm going to unload that. So to unload that, that's going to be the reverse of the five and a half second pulse, which is a three and a half second pulse. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four. Oops. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four. And now when I press it, it'll, uh, Again, unload it at the rate of one inch per second. And there, as I'm pressing it, you can see it moving and it's unloading this filament. So there it's unloaded the filament. So now let's switch to color two to switch forward a color. It's just moving it by, by pressing it one quarter of a second. So now it's moved. We can see that it's clocked to the three o'clock position before it was at six. It's now at three o'clock, which means the second extruder is now active, which is the bottom one on the outside edge. So we'll stick the filament in that hole. Again, we'll do the five and a half second pulse. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000, six. And the second press will run it for that length of time, uh, 25 millimeters per second. And there it's loading. And you can see the filament loading into the tube here. We'll go ahead and back it back out. Again, three and a half second pulse to reverse it. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four. And press the button and now it's backing it back out. We can do this testing with the other two extruders, but remember now we're switching to three and a half second and five and a half second because that's actually just rotating this motor clockwise and counterclockwise. So let's go to extruder number three. Again, a quarter second pulse. There we go. Now we're at the 12 o'clock position, indicating extruder three. We'll go ahead and stick this in the top, top extruder in the middle of the, uh, the unit, closer to the middle. Now we're going to do a three and a half second pulse because we're still turning the motor. We need to turn it counterclockwise. Three and a, three and a half seconds is counterclockwise, always. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four. Oops, I, that was too short. Push that back in there again. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four. And now when I press the button the second time, it'll, it'll load it at that rate, 25 millimeters a second. And there you can see it's loading it. Five and a half seconds to unload it. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000, six. And now second press runs it for that length of time. Okay, one last test, quarter second pulse. 
We are now at the nine o'clock position, indicating that we are in extruder number four. We'll go ahead and press load. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four. Oops, I, my timing is just a little off on that. Try that again. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. Okay, and now we'll press the button again, and there it's loading. So there we can see the filament loading. Our 5 and a half second pulse, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, and then continuous. Perfect. So with that, we validated all the functions of the 3D Chameleon. Uh, let's go ahead and unplug it and we'll start installing it. So to start off, the first thing I need to do is identify where I'm going to install things on my printer, as well as um, understand how I'm going to connect it to the printer. By starting off with the Ender 3 style machines, we automatically recognize that we're going to need to add a PTFE coupler to the uh, extruder because it doesn't have one. The other thing that I see on this machine, uh, which is uh, not on all machines, but is increasingly becoming popular, is that this printer actually has a filament runout sensor. Filament runout sensors are not compatible with the 3D Chameleon uh, as they are today because the firmware is unaware of the 3D Chameleon and it's unaware that there are four filaments. If when we're printing, uh, this uh, runout sensor triggers because it sees an, uh, the filament running out, the 3D Chameleon will trigger that because it's unloading the filament and it thinks it's running out. Um, so they're, they're really not compatible with each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect the runout sensor and remove it uh, very first thing, just to make sure that we don't have a conflict there. You'll also probably want to disable this in your firmware. Uh, no, you, you definitely want to disable it in your firmware if it's enabled. Um, the reason why I'm removing it though is because the, uh, the idea that we have the run runout sensor um, is not bad, except that it's actually in the way. So when we install this, we're going to be feeding filament directly into their extruder. And with a filament sensor right here in front of it, there's no way I can attach my stuff to it. So I need to uh, take that filament sensor off and disable it in the firmware. The second thing that I need to do is I need to add a PTFE coupler because I'm going to be connecting my tube for the input into this printer and there's nothing to attach it to here. So what we've developed is this little uh, adapter plate that has a PTFE connector that we simply screw into it. Just go to our Thingiverse page and download that. You screw that into it, and then this can be mounted underneath the extruder, and it will allow you to attach the PTFE tube. So let me go ahead and attach that real quick. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, remove their stock extruder. Now you wanna be careful doing this, and in fact, I'm gonna turn this around backwards so you guys can see it all. So their arm is held in by a 2.5 millimeter screw. This is a classic Mark 8 extruder. By the way, if you have plastic versions of this, might as well throw it away now. It will break. It isn't a matter of when it will. It's a matter, it's definitely, it will break. There are metal upgrades. If you like this extruder, you can go directly to that. I personally like to upgrade to a BMG clone um, or any of the dual drive machines. Those are all nice. So let me just go ahead and remove this. But I mean, if you want to keep this one, you're more than welcome to keep it. I would highly recommend printing out spare parts uh, right now while it's still working before it breaks. Uh, because there are two failure modes of this unit. And one of them is the arm will break and the other one is the base will break. So, so the arm will always break along this, this screw right here. It'll, it always breaks in that area. So these, these don't last very long. So I've taken their, their arm off there. We now have three screws that are holding it in. We have one, and I'm just gonna leave them loose here, just right in place, two. Now you wanna be careful though, this third one, once I take this third one out, the motor is no longer attached, it's gonna fall down. So we're just gonna set it down when it, when it releases, just like that. We'll just set that on plate there. And I'm gonna take my PTFE coupler adapter, 
I'm going to lift the stock extruder up and just transfer this over. And I'm going to set it right back down into the same spot that the other one was. Now, one thing you might want to watch out for. On some printers, these screws are not long enough. You might need to replace those. These are standard M3 screws. Um, they're a dime a dozen, so pretty cheap to get if you need to get a replacement. So let me go ahead and put this one in. So we'll tighten that down. We'll tighten these others down. Tighten those down, and now we can put the lever arm back on. The way I do the lever arm is I'll put the screw in the first hole, and then without pushing it in place, I'll put the spring on both the nubs, and then I can push it down and compress the lever arm, and we can see that our PTFE tube holder now is actually holding that arm in place. So I'm going to go ahead and start tightening the screw, and I'm going to relieve the pressure a little bit while holding it down and tighten the screw all the way down, and there we go. So now our PTFE coupler is in place. We're pretty good to go there. So while I'm on this side of the printer, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the electronics. I can see that there's a fantastic spot for them right there, just right there. And we're gonna use these two uh, M3, I'm sorry, M2.5, uh, they're M3 uh, T-nuts here. We're gonna use the 2.5 screw to tighten them down. To, uh, to tighten those down, I'm simply going to remove the lid. It just kind of snaps off and it's, it, uh, you can leave the wires in place. If they happen to come undone, you can see they're key. They, they only go in one way, except for the switch on the, the, uh, the switch cable itself. That one is not keyed. It's always going to be the green is to the corner. The green wire goes to the corner of the machine. So I'm going to take these two screws. I'm going to turn them, these two T-nuts, turn them flat. Just slide them into that bottom rail. There we go, just like that. I'm gonna take my T-nut, my screw, my M3. I'm gonna back off the screws just a little bit, a few turns, and then tighten them back up. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow that T-nut to rotate 90 degrees and grab a hold of the, uh, the uh, extrusion. We'll do the same thing with this one. There we go. Oops, I did not get it attached. Let's do that again. Make sure you back off those screws all the way. And that's going to push that T-nut into that slot. Well, it's still not pushing it in. screws all the way. Apparently I'm not getting the screws in far enough. The T-nuts in far enough. They have to be out from the edge. Just some good distance. And the idea there is that when we push them in, they grab a hold. Like that. Push the screw all the way in. Turn it until it Just like that, there we go. Perfect, now we have a good rigid now. So we can put our cover back on. Okay, so we now have the PTFE coupler, we have the electronics mounted, let's mount the switch. The switch is a little different depending on which printer you're mounting it to. In this particular case, I want to mount the switch here, but on some printers, for example, like the original Ender 3, the classic version, you're going to mount the switch up here. Okay. Um, I like to mount it on the Y-axis if at all possible because it's hidden and out of the way, um, but some, some machines just don't have the option. They, they don't have a good location mounting-wise. 
Now on this machine, this is a clone of the Ender 3 V2 uh, with this large block for the Y axis instead of the 20 by 40 rail, which is much smaller. Um, and this has these screws that stick out up here. So what I'm gonna do is I've, I've gone to our website, actually I've gone to our Thingiverse site or uh, um, prusaprinters.org site, and I've downloaded the uh, standoff version. Now, this is the six millimeter standoff version of our switch mount. And that's gonna go right here. But in order to mount this, I need to use that M4 and that T-nut uh, that I had on here earlier. So let me go ahead and mount that. I'm gonna push the screw through. It's going to go in this hole. There's a pocket you can see for that M4 screw, and that's gonna go all the way inside of there, and I need to screw that in here. Once I screw it through, it'll pop all the way through, just like you see there. So it's popped all the way through. Actually, I can push it, there we go. Now it's pushed all the way through. We'll put our, another, our last T-nut on this one. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna mount that into the frame. that in place there we go tighten it up just a little bit more good so the last thing that we need to do here is to mount the switch here and uh, one thing I forgot to pull out of the bag here is the little tiny Phillips screws so we get our Phillips screwdriver and we have these little two millimeter Phillips screws there's two of those in there We'll take that, place the top one through the switch. Now, on uh, depending on how good your printer is when you printed these, uh, these holes might be the right size or they might be too small. They might be oversized or undersized. In that case, you might need to put the screw in there first, tap the hole with it, take it back out, and then put the screw in. But I know my printer is actually pretty good, and I haven't had to do that, so let's try. Let's see how good I am today. I'm not even, I can't even see the hole from my angle. Yeah. I'm gonna have to stand up and see where that hole is. There we go. So we'll leave that loose and we'll start the second screw just to make sure we get a good alignment on those. So it might take a little bit of force, but there you go. There we have the switch installed. And we can test that by moving the build plate forward and listening for the switch trigger. And there we can hear the switch trigger, good. So we've got a good position for that. Now in your kit is this uh, beauty cover that kind of covers this up. But to, uh, to install that, you need to unplug the switch Run this wire through the hole in the bottom here. Plug the switch back in. And then take your switch cover and just slide it up on and snap it in place. So now you have a nice beauty cover for that as well. Now, uh, I'm not gonna worry about wire management right now, but in most cases, what I'll do is I will run this wire into this bottom channel here inside 8020, and I'll run it all the way to the back and hide it back here. You can use zip ties or whatever you need to to, to secure that. Um, I'm just going to leave it on the outside for now. Um, just as a, it's an exercise for you to make your printer look pretty. Uh, it's fully functional this way. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to mount the 3D Chameleon to the top here. To do that, I'm going to take my 3D Chameleon. I'm going to take this top mount device. We're going to take the four center screws there are eight holding both motors in and the whole thing together. We need to take the four center ones out. Do not loosen these outer ones. Uh, we're gonna take just the four. There, uh, the four screws in the middle are 30 millimeter screws. We're going to be replacing those with 35 millimeter screws. So here you can see the length difference. We're just gonna take our 30 millimeters and set them aside. And we're gonna replace those with 35 millimeter screws. Actually, we're not. We're gonna do that through here. 
Take these other two out. So there I have the 430 out, and I'm gonna add the 435s, but I'm going to run them through this plate first. So this plate is our, our hanging mount that goes to the top of the printer here. Now, as I push these through, these two top holes are gonna be a little bit more difficult. You might need to take your, your tool and twist and turn and push and pop them through to get them all the way to seat into the bottom of it, like that. Once they're seated, we're gonna take the hook portion and that's gonna go on the same side where the PTFE tubes are. So we'll take those, slide those down in there and just tighten the screws in place. that one two three four good so now that we have those in place it's time to mount this to the top of the printer so to mount it to the top of the printer we're just going to take this around the back side here and I'm literally going to take this hook and hang it right on top and just set it down and there it is it's installed so I'm going to center it just to make it look nice I'm going to take my PTFE tube we're going to run it right down in and plug it right into the extruder we want to make sure that this PTFE tube goes all the way through and comes in contact there it is comes in contact with the the extruder. So this tube is feeding directly into the open hole of the extruder. That's installed. The last thing that I want to do here is I want to take a couple of my larger zip ties and I'm going to start from the top and drop them straight down into the two slots in the top here. Just like that. We'll then take them and loop them around the front of the printer. Loop them around the front of the printer and just pull this tight. Just like that. Again, loop this around, run it through the zip tie. Tighten it just like that. That's now securely mounted. We can cut our zip tie leads off. Folks, the 3D Chameleon is now installed. I'm going to do two other things very quickly here. Uh, you can actually do any kind of cable management that you want to. You have plenty of zip ties for doing that. Um, I want to measure the position of the switch, and I want to measure the distance between the extruder drive gears and the nozzle. To do that, I'm going to use my little measuring device here. So in this case, if I wrap this around, get to 150 millimeters to this first zip tie. Coincidentally, I get to 150 millimeters to the second zip tie, and then I can measure that all the way down to the nozzle. In this case, I can just put that right there and measure that distance, and I have it exactly 100 millimeters. So that's 400 millimeters exactly from the extruder drive gears to the nozzle. We can put that uh, number into the G-code generator for our uh, extruder drive gears to nozzle distance. The next one that we're going to measure is the, uh, the actual switch position itself. And to do that, I'm going to power up the printer. Turn the printer on. And when this boots up, we're going to home the printer. So we're going to tools, home, all. And now we're going to go back and we're going to go to the move menu. We're going to move, uh, first off, I'm going to move the Z up uh, 10 millimeters. And then we're going to move the Y forward. So right now we're at Y zero. So I'm going to move this forward. One, two, three, four, five. The idea is we're going to move this until this build plate hits the switch. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 
14, 15, 16. Oh, it's the wrong one. Okay, we're at 21 right there. We switch this to one millimeter motions. It's hard to see the screen here. Actually, let me do this. Oh, that's why I was hitting the wrong one. Well, let me let me let me home the y-axis again. Home y-axis. Okay, and then move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. We're going to switch to one millimeter, not point one millimeter. There's one millimeter. Okay. So there I hit it at 14. So 214 millimeters is where I triggered the switch. So I can uh, remember that value. So that value is 214 millimeters on the Y axis and our length was 400 millimeters. We're gonna use those two data points and feed those into our website, uh, G-Code Generator for creating whatever slicer profile you have. Just go to our website, uh, click on the G-code generator, enter the y-axis, the switch is on the y-axis, enter the position of 214 millimeters, which is where the switch actually triggered, and enter the distance of 400 millimeters extruder to the nozzle, and then choose whatever slicer. So Prusa Slicer, Cura, Simplify 3D, or Cura Moto are all supported. Um, if we have a, if you have a browser that's not supported, uh, for example, Idea Maker, Idea Maker really can't run the 3D Chameleon because it can only deal with two colors. So uh, be careful there. However, if you do want to use Idea Maker with two colors only, uh, it will work. Uh, basically, you'll take our our model, what our code is actually doing, break up, you know, break it down into what its core functionality is, which basically is tip shaping, backing it out, pressing the button loading it back in and then you know uh, loading to the extruder so those are the the four basic functions that we're actually doing with this um feel free to ping me send me an email if you want to try to use it but be aware that they only support two colors i haven't really tried any other color uh, any other slicers obviously super slicer is going to work just fine because it's just prusa slicer it's going to use all the same code Kiramoto and Cura actually use the exact same uh, G-code generator. You're going to have to copy all eight uh, segments for that one, or however many you have. Um, and um, Prusa Slicer, we've got the uh, one tool change G-code, and Simplify has a couple different blocks there. So uh, feel free to uh, send me any emails or questions that you might have on that, and we'll get that taken care of. But that's going to wrap it up for this installation. Uh, the next thing that you're going to want to do after you have these values is go to our G-Code generator video, follow it, and generate your G-Code, paste it into your slicer, and start printing. Thanks for watching and thanks for buying the 3D Chameleon. And if I, like I said, feel free to send me an email or uh, post comments on the forum anytime you need help. Thanks.